Today's lesson notes will be about these things. Uh, in fact, all of these things, all of these elements here um, are created quite differently from your previous lessons. It's not so straightforward as if you draw a line and then it will form up to become wall and you drag and drop, it becomes a component of sorts. So today, it's a little bit different because prior to creating this, we need to do some sketching or drawing. Once we have drawn in these, only when we complete its required methods of creation will we see the objects being created. All right, so that is the key. And uh, at certain times, it becomes quite technically challenging to create also. Okay, so that's why we compile all of these together and lump them into one collective topic altogether in a lesson plan. So please try, please open up this first topic on adding flaws. Now, within which, we are going to cover a few things uh, on openings, on floors, on roofs, on ceilings, particularly related to our field of practice here, uh, would be floors, would be ceilings. So we're going to start with adding floor first. So please go to the architectural ribbon and click on floor and click on floor architecture. This one. Floor architectural. This one. <coughs> With this, once you have created or you have activated this command, what you will need to pay attention to, typically mistakes made by new users and students would be this. You have someone asking you, then for some reason, after you click this up already, you activated this command, then, oh, I forgot, I have to create a wall. So, I click on this. Architecture, right, create a wall. And then with this, you will find that suddenly, hey, my commands here, has been frozen out or it has been deactivated or blanked out in this case. Why is that the case? And then well, what must I do so that I can get all these things back? And then you start combing through all of these things. Suddenly, a lot of all these commands are missing or unusable. They are unusable to answer your query here to explain. It is primarily because of this. They are unusable already because we are now in what we call sketch mode. Sketch mode or drawing mode. Once you see this, you must memorize this by heart. This is the key, tricky bit of the user interface here. When you see this big cross and a big tick, you must exit this mode by choosing either. You must exit them for either, hey, you don't want it. You don't want it, you use the cross. You cancel this command, finish. Okay, you want what you have created. You will use the tick here. Yes, I want it, I will tick. All right, these two options only. Now with this also, once you finish this, okay, I'm going to just cancel it. I made a mistake. I needed a wall actually. Oops. So once you have done this, you'll find that all the commands here will be reinstated also. So now let's go back in again to floor architectural. This time now, I'm going to talk to you about the user interface, which is this part here on draw. Creations of the floors, the ceilings, the roofs are a little bit different because they require us to draw and form a closed loop, finish up the drawing before, before we can exit the mode and the objects being created properly. Alright, so that is the key here. Now, what's going to happen is, if you look inside here, you see boundary line, you see slope arrow, you see span direction, okay? These are the same, these are the few things here. Now, Typically, we try to create a floor, a floor plate, eh? what we call a floor plate, by its boundary line. That means you draw a shape, that shape is the floor. Like in 3D Studio Max, you draw the shape in 2D, you extrude, right, finish. Similarly that. 
But there are times of which, there are times of which we use this. Okay. Pretty much this function is the same as um, using the roof when you create a floor. Later on when we touch on roof, I'm going to make you guys pay more attention to this part because in the roof function, we will use, we will exploit more of these commands here in intricacy. Alright, but with this, whatever is being applied in the roof can generally be applied also for using the floor. This one, you just have to experiment it a little bit. Alright. And with the sketch mode also, you will see a set of tools given to you, which are the basic drawing tools. Like for example, a line, the most basic one. You can draw lines, you can draw rectangle shapes, you can draw polygons, you can draw circles, arcs, curves, and splines. And on top of that also, you can draw, you can use certain tools like thick lines to just form the shape. Alright? Because I, I hate doing tracing, so I'd rather just pick those things up and then I clean stuff up. So for the very basic one, we're going to need to create a floor plate of this entire floor here. You can choose to, okay, I can choose to draw the shape out and finish it. Alright? And I will have my floor plate created like that. Finish. That's it. That's the that's the floor plate. You can fix it by selecting the object that you have created and click on the edit function here. Edit boundaries function. That means I can I can correct it by cleaning stuff up. So I'm gonna do so and then I'm gonna clean the job up now. This time now I'm gonna do a more precise job. I will do it by using the thick lines option here this one so I click on this I still don't like to trace so I'd rather use this function on pick walls and then I can just fish things out this way so like that notice I am not even aiming I'm not even doing a, a, a more detailed job I just fish it out first that's more I that's what I care about more okay now after I've done this, look, if I try to finish this, Revit tells me hey, you can't do this, you cannot finish this because lines must be in closed loops. The highlighted lines are open on one end. Where are the highlighted lines? These in red at the moment. Alright? So it will attempt to highlight to you where those mistakes or errors are and it will not allow you to exit the sketch mode unless you cancel it. Think of this as you are trying to form a loop. Forming a loop of what? Think of it as a rubber band. The rubber band must be closed so that it is workable. If not, it cannot work. Alright? So therefore, we are going to click on continue and I'm going to use the modify tools here to finish the job and to clean the job up properly. In this case, I will be using the trim and extend command very, very frequently here. So I will just mop this up and I'm going to try. Can I finish the job or not? Try. And then you will get prompts like that. Would you like walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom? What it means is this. In a sectional situation, in a section where the walls are, okay, and then you created a new floor plate here, it will ask you, hey, do you want us to push these walls up so that it reaches, then form up nicely like that for you, okay? Situations like that, we meet certain considerations. All right. Sometimes we use it, sometimes we don't use it. All right. We start with not using it first. We will, we will go on to explain to you why and when are the situations you will need it. Okay. So we're going to use, say, no at this point and leave it. After this creation has been done, you will, re you will recognize or you will see this as the floor plate being created and it will be highlighted in blue 
until you deselect it. All right? Please try this. Now, once we are done with the first floor, we will move on to creating a second floor. Second floor is where we add a little bit more of a challenge for you. Now, the situation is, this is the floor plate here. The floor plate of this area is here. The boundary is here. This is the top. This part doesn't have a second floor, so we are looking at the roof here. Okay, this is the roof, so we don't create a floor. Now, on top of this, we want to add a void here. So what's going to happen is we need to draw this so that we can have a void down here. Okay, so essentially, we will be creating a floor plate that looks like this. Let me show you how to do this properly. Now, same thing, we go to Architectural Ribbon, select the floor, select floor, architectural, this one. Once you are in there, I hate to trace, so no tracing as much as I can. I will click on Pick Walls command. I will fish out whatever walls I can from which. Until I have no choice, I have to create this void. Then no choice, I will then draw. But when I draw, I will just fish out this. Now I have to fish this line and trace out this particular staircase because it's also the staircase landing. Alright, top of the landing. Now you will find that when you are working in Revit, you are not so much concerned with the precision. In Revit, it's completely the opposite. Uh, we tell you, do it quick, do it fast. Just get the lines in first, then we deal with it after that. So again, same thing. I'll just draw, okay? Don't need to snap or whatever, okay? That's, um, I think that's about it, you know, really. Uh, what else must I do? I think that's about it, really. All right? After this is done, then I'll use the tools to clean things up. I know that this is not going to get me out of this drawing mode, huh? so I will use the trim and extend command. I'll clean this up. And then, I, do I need this or not? I think I don't need. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay? I'm just going to get rid of this. And it looks okay. Alright, I'm done. Can or not? Oops, cannot. Telling me I haven't done a proper job here again. So what, can, what must I do? Alright, I will go inside there and mop this up also. So I clean this up. Now, the same prompt comes in this time round. Hey, would you like walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom. This time round though, I'm going to show you a different scenario. We will use the option, yes. And then the secondary prompt comes in, which asks you again, the floor slash roof overlaps the highlighted wall. Would you like to join the geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the wall? Sounds like a mouthful. What exactly does this mean? Just use yes for now and I'll explain. Now, in a, in a section situation, all right? In a section scenario here, you have vertical walls this way. All right, when you create floors like that, if you don't join them, it looks this way. It looks quite wrong, especially when those walls are RC and your floor is also RC. RC stands for reinforced concrete, in case you don't know what that means. Huh? Alright, by now it's a problem. I need to talk to you indeed. When you join those things up properly, it will form moments like this. It looks like they are one piece when you draw them in a section. When you cut a section through, it appears like that. Although, even with this, we can erase them, all right? But again, if you have the function, why go through the hassle of doing something else so that you need to do cleaning up, all right? As much as possible, we don't want to do that yet, okay? So therefore, that's why we choose the option, all right? Now, once we have created this, I want you to view your creation. Go to view, go to section, and I want you to plot a section line in between grid lines two and three and I want you to cut through so that you see the void situation happening all right so we can see the void nicely here like that okay and once you have that one created 
I want you to double click on it so you can now see the you can now see the section that moment we have we have been talking about. As a comparison here, I want you to take a look at this area and this area. This line, by the way, is the void line, the void separation line. Here. Okay. So what's going to happen is this. You see the lines all forming up. By right, there's a wall line here, but it has been merged inside because you join it compared to this one when you didn't have anything happening. Okay? We can clean this up if there is a need to. All right? If your section has been firm there, we can do some cleaning up. Um, you will find that when you work at it in detail, uh, when you have them in in fine display modes and everything, you will see that things like that will begin to happen. It can sometimes become quite difficult to manage. But these are small little areas in detail. We would have, we will show you techniques and, and methods how to get away from which. All right, how to get around this. Okay. But the main key essence of this exercise here is to show you how to create flaws. All right, the floor plates for now. In your project, for example, you are going to definitely likely need to use the floors. If not, you will definitely need to use the ceiling because you need to treat the ceilings, huh? that one. So let's close this. If you want, you can save them. 